Uh, first of all, let me say on behalf of my team, uh, thank you very much, distinguished judges, for listening to this pitch. Uh, we're PIFT, or PST, uh, Platform uh, Filtration Technology. Um, the, the sales pitch is basically we're creating a platform for that, that takes atomically precise or nearly so membranes on a large enough scale for point of use applications. Uh, uh, separations tunable by varying atomically precise pore sizes and shape. To be honest, we'll handle the size scale of pores that are larger than can be done by the technology that you just heard about. Uh, uh, the problem we're solving is efficient energy separations, focus on some real world application. Uh, uh, transfer technology opportunities are multiple. The long term payoff is a uh, uh, significant reduction in cost of gas separation modules, propane ethane separation, etc. Uh, and we need more investigation. We're still emergent phase. We need more investigation to, to, to specifically target uh, uh, the first uh, sort of applications. Uh, the funding is, again, we're at the non, we're at the uh, emergent stage, so we need non-dilutive investments, uh, DARPA contracts, DOE, SBRs. In the future, we hope to get to the disruptive stage, so we need large scale funding, so we're going to talk to Bill Gates. Uh, Tom told us to do that. Uh, 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 goals and benefits, uh, massive parallel, uh, and the higher level of this, massive parallelization will lead to scale up of, of nanotechnology, increased efficiency, uh, non equilibrium pro processes on membranes, uh, quite possibly, and the main elements are large industrial scale uh, processes to achieve uh, the uh, scale up from the, from the bottom up. Uh, uh, criteria for evaluating processes is, is uh, single film uh, species. Uh, uh, multi-film, multi-species uh, for parallelization, uh, large-scale uh, films that we're going to make, uh, uh, and uh, an order of magnitude improvement in the efficiency over existing processes. Now, there, there's a, one that we're kind of tickled by that, that uh, we're not certain about this, but we have a possibility of combining both placing atomically precise, say, enzymes or other functional materials on top, very near pores where we can maybe do sequential processing for complex processing a particular, uh, although, you know, if you had a, a stream of uh, mixed gas with CO2, an oxygen exclusion layer, and then uh, the Rubisco uh, instrumented layer for sugar output, just one example of many possibilities of multi-stage uh, processing. Uh, the main elements of the uh, uh, approach we've talked about before, a technology platform, for either atomically precise patterns on a large scale that we can do with roll to roll, uh, uh, using this hydrogen depassivation lithography to do the serial sort of mask making or template making, if you will, and then go to on to a parallel processing uh, through a large scale roll to roll. Uh, and there's uh, alternatively between, between the filtration, we can perhaps uh, use these catalysts either singly or maybe in a sequential process. Uh, uh, there's also things that we think we can do to significantly improve the upper bound for gas separation. Uh, uh, briefly, we've been through this before. We plan to make atomically precise with the STM processing uh, of uh, atomically precise things to do uh, uh, nano imprint. We have demonstrated the, the technical feasibility of doing that with SV Srinivasan at, at, at UT Dallas with a process of uh, selective ALD after the hydrogen depassivation. Uh, there's uh, a number of things besides pore making that we could uh, create platforms for that where we're losing some precision and spreading this out, but we could then uh, attach atomically precise molecules or other structures that could have valuable uh, chemical processing capabilities. By placing them close together, significant improvements and efficiencies have been demonstrated. Uh, uh, and again, as we talked about before, I think uh, I've got a duplicate uh, of this processing through uh, multiple pores for sequential processing. Uh, technical barriers preventing us half time good. Technical barriers for, uh, that we've got is the scalability of this hy hydrogen depassivation lithography, although we have done some fundamental looks and we think it's, ma it's parallelizable, to massively parallel. Uh, but then we go even more massively parallel by making these templates that then can do the processing with roll to roll processing. Uh, and we're, uh, there, the, some of the other pro problems are uh, immature pattern transfer that we'd need to work on. Again, we're at the emergent stage. Uh, we have an excellent team and access to excellent, uh, the, the, some of the very best people in the world to help us with various stages of this. Uh, risk include uh, scaling the STM lithography, scaling the roll-to-roll -roll processing, and maintaining that ultra-precision, 
Better understanding of filtration needs, frankly. We think point of use makes the most sense, and we need to learn a lot more about that and what makes sense. And better understanding of coordinated catalysis synthesis. Uh, we're going to mitigate that through uh, collaboration and funding of R and R&D uh, with some non-dilutive. So uh, some examples of what we can do. For instance, we don't have to make circular uh, pores. We don't have to rely on chemistry to give us a particular structure. We can make three nanometer squares. We can make odd shapes to do very specific molecular filtration. Uh, now, again, I'm going to have to work on the pattern transfer to maintain the fidelity of that, but it's, that's a very exciting opportunity. Um, so uh, I'm going to try, in the time that I've got left, to give you some examples of what's been demonstrated uh, and sort of a uh, idea of where we can go. First of all, Joe's demonstrated, uh, lighting has demonstrated the ability to change electronic structure by deposition nearby on carbon nanotubes. You can change the electronic structure in a very nice way. But a little bit more apropos, he's shown that we can get this selective deposition of specific molecules where we've removed the hydrogen. Uh, in this particular case, there's a, 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 this norboridine on silicon uh, fills up very nicely. He's further demonstrated the ability to put down specific porphyrin molecules in specific places on the on the silicon with very high precision. And then if I can get through this, the idea is we're going to create some binding, some places that we can see on the silicon surface. We're going to add in specific molecules, AB molecules, that will be able to have very selective attachments of different things uh, where we can then transfer. That happens uh, on a surface that we can then transfer onto something like a polymer membrane that is, is, has a, a roll to roll going going through, we can repeatedly add these AB specific molecules and transfer them to the membrane. Those things can be separately, uh, uh, have different functional groups on those, and then we can add, and then, then we can take it out uh, uh, into a liquid phase, add on uh, uh, in solution phase specific DNA to get very specific uh, uh, binding so we can control the orientation and create highly complex structures, say DNA origami, that has specific binding sites for different functionalities on it. Uh, uh, and uh, this allows us for a, a great platform technology to accomplish a lot of different potential processing, taking from starting off with atomically precise patterning, moving on to a, a highly parallel system that can place specific uh, functionalities on a surface in, in, in we believe, massively parallel to make really large areas of this to make it cost effective. And, and lastly, I mean, we, clearly there's a need for this sort of processing. It's been identified by, in multiple places. The we believe that, again, separation technology and other chemical processing enzymatic approaches has a big payoff. And that's what I wanted to cover. Thank you very much. Well, uh, actually, I was going to make a suggestion. You're talking about putting proteins in particular sites. You mentioned earlier about clear chemistry. I'm not sure you knew exactly what it was, but you can engineer an a, a, a amino acid with a, a, a triple bond, a carbon carbon triple bond, put an azide on the surface, and then it will direct that to exactly that site. Yeah. So There's, I, I'm certainly not the surface uh, scientist here. Or, or the organic chemist, but yeah, there's a lot of functionalities we could take advantage of, and uh, we'll come to you and discover more of them. Jane. Could you go into a little bit more detail about the scale up, about the registry of the stamping pattern, and also about the transfer from an inorganic to an organic surface? Uh, we're, we were a little bit loose about that, but, but whether you can certainly engineer the uh, affinity of, of one sort of uh, hydrogen bond to a, a different uh, site where there's a greater affinity. Uh, uh, actually, um, uh, quite a bit of work was done real nicely uh, in Harvard about you know, a molecular transfer. Uh, you just engineer the bonds from, uh, so you can transfer things cleanly, a molecular transfer from one surface to another. Wide variety of things are doing that. I'm not the expert to uh, uh, explain that. But let me talk briefly about scaling up, especially on the hydrogen depassivation. Okay, a single STM tip is, re it's, is a really high precision process, but it's really, really, really slow. So we've got to take it massively parallel. In fact, I published a paper last year about going with MIMS 3D scanners uh, using existing technology in MIMS 
And uh, you get around the crosstalk problem by putting a little local CMOS controller. This, this paper looks into the power consumption uh, of these CMOS controllers. We go with electrostatic actuation. I believe we can get 7 million XYZ scanners on the surface of a 300 millimeter wafer. Now, let me be clear that that's still way too slow to do consumer electronics. But for high value things to make templates that can be used in a much more parallel sense, this is a very attractive approach. So it seems like an interesting technology that could be applied to a number of things relative to like the climate impact and like the, you know, planetary health. What, what do you see as like those first use cases? For the one that makes the most sense to me is, is point of use filtration to keep uh, uh, things that we want to keep out of the atmosphere and the drinking water and uh, the, the, just the groundwater in place. Uh, one example that, that somebody brought up over here was uh, these nanoplastics. If we could maybe put in, and whether or not you need as specific a filter as this, I don't know, we haven't looked into it, but, but perhaps we could fil filter the nanoplastics coming out of fabrics in washing machines and, and just keep them out. We could perhaps use them uh, in uh, smokestacks, etc. There's no way we can scale up to a point that can do anything like the carbon sequestration as a, a trillion trees. Uh, we just don't have a, a path there. But point of use filtration uh, for the planet, we think there's a lot of other valuable products, for, uh, especially in pharma, that, that uh, doesn't necessarily save the planet, but extremely valuable applications. I've talked to especially people in the biologics uh, uh, industry that uh, they believe that we could better provide them with better filtration and other processing that they find valuable. But, you know, if, fr frankly, if it's my money and, and I'm looking at these various things, I don't see how we can possibly compete in sort of, sort of carbon sequestration with a trillion trees or a trillion mo genetically modified trees. If I was going to ask to put my money on something that had a better chance of impacting the major problems, it would probably be that and not us, to be honest. So I have one question. Sure. Why do you need STM lithography? Why don't you find another way to do this? I it don't looks know. like you're trying to find a solution. Uh, well, uh, well, you have a solution and you're looking for a problem. That's what it looks uh, like. That's a fair statement, but there's, the deal is, is we can get patterning which allows us for selective deposition of molecules that I just don't know any other way to do, to put them exactly where we want. Uh, uh, it's a scalable, uh, to some extent, technology up to pretty massively parallel. Um, I do believe this has real value in terms of placing atomically precise things with atomic precision that we can take advantage of. That's my belief. Is it technology push? Yes, it's technology push. But I do believe there's significant, effort, there's significant value. I don't know. I've been doing lithography my entire life. This is an order of magnitude at least better than the very best you can hope to do with e-beam lithography. All right, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. No thank problem. Thank you so much. And we'll be moving on to the next.